Hello bookish journal friends, it's Erin here. We are setting up my reading journal for September, but first let's have a look at what I've been reading in August. Obviously it's not a complete flip through because I haven't finished August yet because the month is ongoing, but if you want to see how I fill out the stats section, I'll make sure to do that on my Instagram stories. The only one from my might read next section that I have completed thus far is The Travelling Cat Chronicles. I am reading The True Colours of Coral Glen at the moment, but it's on paperback and I'm learning that I really don't like reading physical books, which is kind of terrible. Likewise, The Night Watch, although I did get it on audible so I can listen to it rather than holding the book. Isn't it funny how much I don't enjoy that experience? These three books I have finished and we'll come back to that page and add to it a little bit later on but here's a quick flip through of everything I read. Unfortunately the ink on the next page has bled through my yellow face header here which is unfortunate. This must have been an alcohol or an oil based marker. I didn't know. I do really like how it looks on the peer pressure header but what are you gonna do? It's there now so Yellowface was our book club book for the month and it was really enjoyable. Peer Pressure and a few of the others in here I actually technically read in July but I hadn't left myself enough space because I read a lot in the end of July that I didn't kind of expect to consume so many books in that time so they had to go somewhere, they went in this space but it gives you a little bit of a peek at what I read in July as well I guess. No particularly terrible times with any books, everything was pretty enjoyable, some a little bit more than others. And there are a couple of things I still need to update, so we need to put a cover for the Travelling Cat Chronicles here, likewise for the Enchanted Island. I've made myself a little list on a post-it of everything I need to print, and I am reading Throne of Glass at the moment, so I've printed that already at a time when I was doing some other covers. I always tend to try to do four at a time, so I'm not wasting any of my sprocket paper. I was actually doing that again here with this Woven Kingdom, which is the orange one in the bottom right corner of these four. At the time that I set this up, I hadn't finished it yet, but I actually just finished it about an hour before recording this voiceover. So I will be adding it to my August Reads page as well. Gave it four stars in case you're wondering. Such a fun time. I listened to the audiobook through the Libby app via my library. It was a really fun time. I feel like if you've read The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels and you liked it, then this would probably also be up your alley, especially the audiobooks I think had some similarities. No flying houses, but you know. If you saw the original setup for these August pages, then you might remember I'd been thinking of using the right page for a quote page, and I changed my mind. I ended up putting books here that I read that were not part of my <laughs> goals for myself, but that meant that I didn't plan out the space on the page very well, so I'm having to add my star rating for the Enchanted Island here on some sticker paper. Otherwise, I'm, I'm just gonna run out of page space, you know? So I'm putting it over the top of my lovely London Gifties Plants and Books sticker. And I'm using a Tombow Food and Noske brush pen for this. I usually use it with my star ratings because it's what's always out on my desk, but I don't think it works so well on the sticker paper. So maybe something more permanent would be a better fit there. It's a little bit shiny, maybe that's why. The Travelling Cat Chronicles and The Enchanted Island both get their book covers stuck down. I've already done the review spreads for those ones, so nothing else I need to do there. I have quite a few cat stickers, so I'm thinking now I probably should have done more of an art page review page setup for The Travelling Cat Chronicles, but I didn't think of it until this moment, so it just has a boring review page instead. I'm very sorry, Nana. Now let's get into the actual September pages so that we're all set up and ready when the month hits. This PET tape, the floral wave tape from the washi tape shop, is the basis of my theme and I'm pairing it up with these two solid washi tapes, a yellow and a kind of light peachy colour, as the basis for the whole theme. Besides those three items, I'm just going to be using that same Tombow Fudonosuke brush pen from earlier, and that's it actually. Maybe some Sakura Pigma Micron fine liners, but really simple and very minimal this time around, which is different for me. We are coming into spring here in Australia for September, so it makes sense to have flowers because, you know, Miranda Priestley said it best, flowers for spring, groundbreaking. And when I am doing a more minimal layout, I always find I reach for the letter stamps because they give me a very clean sort of uniform look if I'm trying to line them up with each other. And I like that. So it's worked out quite nicely for this one. I know there are people out there who find cover pages like this one superfluous. I know this because I used to be one of them, but I like the demarcation of a new month. I like just having that mindset space to get your head around a new month. So I just like having a cover page. If you don't like a cover page, don't do one, that's okay. This one is actually a really easy and simple theme to pull off, so if you're new to journaling in any way, this would be a good kind of a theme to start with. I'm literally just layering these two washi tapes next to each other. Every time I use one, I also use the other, and then a little chunk of the floral PET tape over the top, and that's pretty much it. And if you do that consistently all the way through, suddenly you'll find you have a theme. <laughs> and it is the easiest, cheatiest way that I know of to pull something like this together. It takes almost no time, which is great because I wanted this setup to be really quick and easy. 
I know I'm gonna be going pretty hard in October because I do love me some Halloween. So of course I'm gonna be putting a lot of effort into my October setups, both in my regular bullet journal and in my reading journal. So I'm going easy on this one because I'm kind of saving some energy for later, you know? And of course, if in doubt, put it in a box. If ever you're not loving a layout, just draw a box around it and then everything will make more sense together. Although I did go outside of where I wanted my lines to end a few times in this setup, not just on this page, but later on too, as well as my messing up of the spelling of September that you saw earlier, of course. So my white paint marker is coming in really handy for these ones. Because this is only the second time I'm doing a monthly reading journal setup ever, I'm still learning a lot about what I like, what I want to be tracking, I'm absorbing a lot of other people's reading journal content to kind of get an idea of what other people do and what might work for me. And last month I did this calendar setup. I'm not changing it too much to be honest, but I was tracking the number of pages read, which was data I pulled from a graph on Storygraph, which is really useful. This time I thought I might try something different. I'm stealing this idea completely from Amanda from Books Ergo Sum on Instagram, absolutely obsessed with her account. She does this amazing calendar that shows the timeline of when she's reading books that's color coded. And I usually have at least two books going at once, one on my Kindle and one on audiobook, and I get through the audiobooks a lot faster than I get through the ones on my Kindle or indeed the paperbacks that I'm trying to work my way through at the moment. So I thought it would be cool to see when they all fall into my month and give me some interesting insight on how long it actually takes me to read different kinds of books. So this calendar is going to be for that. I've got some space after the 30 and before the 1 so that if there are books coming from, you know, you don't just start your books on the 1st of September and finish them on the last day of August or anything like that. So when there's overlap, you can kind of still reflect that, if that makes sense. And I'm keeping the stats section actually largely the same, but it looks a little bit different because I'm changing some of the data from just writing a list into some pie charts for something a bit more visually interesting. I've never, ever, ever done a pie chart before. I'm looking forward to my Goodreads data, like Spotify wrapped equivalent thing at the end of the year, because I definitely want to transfer that into my journal. But for now, just two little pie charts, one for genres and one for format, i.e., you know, audiobook or ebook or library, whatever. And the three yellow boxes are also for a general number, the number of books I completed, my average rating for the month, and what the standout book was, which isn't a number. But you know, there's a bit of space under that so I can write a longer title if I need to. And I totally forgot to mention, but everything I'm using in this video, if I can link to it, there will be a link to it in the description, which I don't think there's anything that's not linkable in this one, so that's always good. In the name of consistency and repetition, which is what builds a theme, if you've seen my how to make your bullet journal more beautiful video recently, you might know that. I'll link to that in the description in case you'd like to see. We need to add some of the same decoration from the left page onto the right page now, or it doesn't make sense. And originally I was going to put it under the three yellow uh, stats bits there, but I decided to move it to the outside, which I wouldn't usually do kind of two on the same side, but because there's going to be some data filled in there, I thought maybe we'll just do it this way because I didn't need that space underneath the pie charts as much as I needed the space underneath the standout book section. And that is the cover page and the stats page totally done. Let's turn the page now. On the left here, I'm going to have my maybe next page. Last month I called it might read next. I'm just going back to maybe next, which is what I called it at the very beginning of the 2023 setup for this journal. Just a few less letters to do, you know. This is what I call my TBR. I don't like the term to be read. It feels like a task list. I read because it's fun. I don't want to make it sound like a task, so I call it maybe next instead. Last month, I was trying to really get through those paperbacks, so I looked through what I had and I set three of them to paperbacks that I had on my shelf that I wanted to try and target, and I did three other books generally, and I feel like that was a bit ambitious. So I'm, I'm going to pare it back a bit this time. I'm going to start with just three and then see how I go, and I have space that I can add to it from there if I get inspiration to maybe try and target some other books. To be totally honest with you, I'm just so ready to get into Halloween books, but I'm trying to hold off until it is the appropriate month. So calm down, Erin, hold your horses. It is not even September yet. It's gonna be okay. We will come back to this page at the end of the setup and I will put the books that I'm kind of targeting here, the ones that are my goal to read for the month of September. But for now, we're gonna carry on so you can see what this all looks like before the pen. We can do a full flip through and then we'll do that after so that it's, you know, separate. On the right page, we have the September read section, which is for all the books that I actually read in September. 
when I put the Maybe Next titles down, I'll put the book covers and then a star rating underneath them. So if I read them, they will serve that purpose on the left page, but the right page is for anything that was not in the Maybe Next list that I read, which will probably be bigger than the Maybe Next list because that's what's happened in August. And just like we've done at the beginning of this video where I showed you where I'm at with August, when we set up for October, I will again show you how this September setup is going so you can kind of sticky beacon. If we're reading some of the same books, we can have a little chat about them in the comments. I am also always open to suggestions. We're gonna carry on to the last spread this time. This one is for my book club. We're called The Literary Ladies and I think we're really cool. <laughs> As you saw earlier, our book for last month was Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang, and it sparked the most wonderful debate that we had around dumplings. It was incredible. I look forward to talking about books with these ladies so much. So I like to give it its own specifically literary ladies spread within the theme to really celebrate it because I just love doing this with these girls so much. This month's selection was made by our resident horror girly, and I am not usually a horror girly, so I'm a little bit scared of what the month has ahead. If you want to see what the book is, stick around to the end of the video, because I will stick the cover for it down on this spread when we're doing all of the adding books part later on. But for now, let's just make a pretty spread. I'm not sure how I'm going to end up using this page because I obviously haven't read the book yet. So I'm kind of just doing some decoration in the top left and bottom right corners and leaving lots of space for me to use the rest of the page as I decide once I've read the book. Here she is before the pen. We have a cover page and a stats page because I like numbers and statistics. They're really interesting. Maybe next for my intentions for the month, September reads for what I actually read and the literary ladies spread, which is for my book club. Now let's add some books to it. Yay. <laughs> I mentioned before I'm only choosing three books for my maybe next page this time around to take the pressure off myself a little bit because I did feel like once August hit I looked at that list and I went I don't really feel like reading many of these so good job there me not very good predictions for my mood reading self because I'm only doing three for my intentions this time I've used the extra space to print another copy of the cover of this woven kingdom because I will have to put it on my August reads page as well as its own review page so it's good to have two copies of it and I'm not wasting any sprocket paper so that's good. The first book I've chosen for my baby next section is Boy Swallows Universe by Trent Dalton which I started reading a couple of years ago but I feel like I should finish it now. Trent Dalton is an Australian author. He's actually based in my very city and they are turning Boy Swallows Universe into a Netflix series at the moment, which I'm excited to see, but I want to read it first, you know, so it's time. It's set in my city and it was also shot in my city, so that's going to be a really fun experience because not a lot goes on in Brisbane, not really. I do still really want to get these paperbacks off my shelves. Once I read them, I'm just going to donate them. Um, they were secondhand books to start with, so I will send them back into the secondhand book life cycle. One of those books is Saving Francesca by Melina Marchetta. I think I may have actually read this before, maybe in high school, but I don't really remember it. I just remember the cover. It came very highly recommended from my friend and book club member Brooke, so I'm giving it another go. And last but not least is Karma is a Witch by B. Perkins and Amy Vance, which is the last installment in the Deadlights Cove series. They are indie authors. It's on Kindle Unlimited. If you like a supernatural kind of paranormal romance, mystery, adorable Gilmore Girls vibe, it's got a lot going on, but they are so good. So much fun. Highly recommend. This one's coming out in the end of August, but I'm probably not going to get to read it till September. So I thought that can go on the list. Definitely. When I pre-print these book covers that I know I'm going to stick in later, so that I don't lose them, I honestly very rarely use the pocket at the back of my journal. At the moment though, I do have some pictures for Karma as a Witch tucked in there because the authors shared inspiration photos for the characters, so I printed them all at once so I would have them done. But I usually just use a washi sticker and stick them to the next page in my journal. And then there's some space in there for some extra spreads as well, in case I do pretty arty things. This is the book club book for September. It's the Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix and it is so far out of my usual wheelhouse. I haven't started listening to it yet. I'm gonna to listen to the audiobook because they have it on Libby and I'm like, well, if it's free, why not? And here we are again for another flip through. This is the after the pen, obviously still nothing on stats, but just so you can see how the rest of it is kind of coming together. I will be sharing when I fill out those stats on my Instagram story, so jump over to Instagram if you'd like to see those, and there'll be a flip through of the whole journal at the end of the year too, so you will see all of that stuff filled in at some point, I promise. See you next week. I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye.